new choices, new players, new models of care. You know consumer first healthcare is everywhere. For us to build the future, to see what's new, we gotta look at the world from a different point of view. Consumer innovation ain't going away. I say it's here to stay, today it leads the way. We gotta drop the silos, we're all the same team. Experience, business, tech, and marketing. So join us now, join the revolution. Consumer first health is the evolution. Status quo, or like status, no. Yeah, this is the healthcare rep. Yo, come on, let's go. Welcome back to the leading podcast about consumer innovation. I'm Jared Johnson, and here's what's going to go down today. We have the flavor of the week about One Medical's newest expansion. One year after Amazon's acquisition, is there still a growth path for care models that are designed for humans? And can we double down on solving for access? I'll talk about that. Then Zane and I welcome Keenan Weirbeck, co-founder and CTO of Zipline. We're going to talk about how drone delivery is changing the way that patients with chronic diseases access care, how it enables health at home, and how consumer-centric means getting physical things fast. It's time to dive right in. Are you ready? Let's go. Flavor of the Week. Amazon and One Medical might not be making tidal waves anymore, but they're still causing ripples with their latest expansion announcement. You'll recall that Amazon first announced their acquisition of One Medical in July 2022, stunning healthcare and the better part of the business world for that matter, and it closed the deal seven months later in February of 2023. Now a year later, Forbes senior contributor Bruce Japson reports that the provider of physician-staffed clinics and virtual care has added more than 15 new offices and will be expanding into two additional U.S. markets by the end of the year. One Medical, which has nearly 250 40 primary care offices in more than 20 U.S. markets is expanding in existing markets in addition to adding new locations later this year in Milwaukee and Hackensack, New Jersey. Amazon and One Medical executives see consumer demand for its primary care model across metropolitan statistical areas given that 40% of Americans don't have a primary care provider. Their executives claim that their model is performing well and they don't tie physicians to productivity numbers based on volume of patients treated. Rather, the physicians are salaried. Their partnerships with local healthcare systems also provide buy of their membership healthcare platform a way to access more specialized services that are attractive to commercial health insurers and local employers that might include One Medical Amazon Health and Pharmacy Services in their health benefit packages. One Medical has partnered with some of the nation's largest and well-known locally operated healthcare systems from Mount Sinai Health System in New York and Mass General Brigham in Boston to UCSF Health in San Francisco. Now in New Jersey, the new clinic is opening in a partnership with Hackensack Meridian Health while the Milwaukee expansion will include a partnership with Advocate Aurora. So like I said, maybe we classify this announcement as a ripple rather than a wave. And listen, I don't know if we're going to see another full reshuffling of the retail game board anytime soon like we have over the last three years with Amazon, Walgreens, and CVS Health pouring billions into building out full care stacks and Best Buy and Walmart Health banking their own plays at a smaller scale. But regardless, it appears that there does continue to be a growth path for care models that are designed for humans. And that's the point. And as you and I continue to champion a higher level of consumer-centered design in care models and platforms, we would do well to remember that the winners will be the ones who solve for access. Let's double down on solving for access so that consumers will have more options for getting amazing care from trusted sources. That's another way that we'll build the healthcare of tomorrow. And that's the Flavor of the Week. The flow, the flow. All right, everyone, let's get into the flow. Hey, Zane, you're back here. How's it been? Not bad. Just busy with work and still resting from our time down at HIMSS. And so excited for that content get, to get out there as well. So i still tired. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, we're talking about one of your favorite topics today, Zane, which is drone delivery. And we finally have the, yeah, we have the fortune of, of having a guest who has been very prominent in the advent of drone delivery in healthcare. So let's get right to it. Please give it up for Keenan Weirbeck. He's the co-founder and CTO at Zipline. We're going to talk about drone delivery, about kind of how things have come about, how it works, who's involved, what might a health system, you know, how they might partner, and, and who benefits ultimately. We always like to bring it back to the consumers, those who are being cared for. 
Keenan, welcome aboard. Hey, great to be with you. We're excited again just to, I think most people are familiar with a couple of these topics. So let's give you a, a minute or two. Tell us a little bit about yourself personally, professionally. What do you, what would you like our listeners to know about you? Yeah. My, I mean, my passion is fundamentally around healthcare and using technology to improve healthcare in ways where the technology is hopefully you know, completely transparent and just sort of melts in the background. That's where I find the magic and my, the joy for me. Love it. I love how succinct that is because it makes it sound like this is something that you're working on every single day, which you are. So I love that. Absolutely. Living and breathing it. Can you give us a layperson's description of Zipline? A lot of our familiar our listeners will be familiar, but maybe not everyone. Tell us how you explain it to somebody who's not in the business, as it were. And then we'll and then let's talk about some of the problems in healthcare that you're working to address. Fundamentally, right, drone delivery of medical supplies is our core. And you know, the thing to picture is you know, we've delivering things like blood, vaccines to hospitals and clinics, things like pharmaceuticals and other medical supplies directly to patients' homes. We do that in eight countries around the world. And, you know, really the, the way I think about this from a healthcare perspective is get the practitioners, get the doctors and nurses what they need to do their jobs and get the patients in their homes what they need to, to stay on their healthcare plans and just make that unbelievably kind of just magical and in the background. That's fantastic. It sounds like, you know, I've been tracking you all for a while. And so it sounds like you all had a lot of success. Is it over in Rwanda? Am I getting that correct? Over in Africa with some remote drone delivery? Yeah. So we started in Rwanda. Rwanda was our first country. We're now in a handful of countries in Africa. And then eight total around the world, including Japan and here in the U.S. So we deliver healthcare supplies in both Utah and Arkansas here in the United States. That's fantastic. Well, one question that comes to mind. So Jared and I spend a lot of time talking with certainly digital health leaders, but also hospital innovation and consumerism leaders. And I'll say currently, I don't hear a whole lot of people saying, gosh, we need drones. And so curious I I read your report last night, excellent report you have on your website. looks like you're working with a number of health systems here in the United States. To get us started, what are the problems that health system leaders come to you with that or or that they're trying to solve for that they then realize, hey, a partner like Zipline actually might help solve these problems? I think of it as basically, you know, making healthcare just basically more patient-centric, right? You know, enabling patient care in the home, closer to home, That's healthcare systems around the world, including here, I figured out like that's just how you create better care at lower cost, which is the magic. Like that's the secret sauce, right? Better care at higher cost. That's been our tradition, but obviously not sustainable. And healthcare at, you know, higher quality at lower cost is where the magic is and do it. And the way you do that is by, you know, keeping patients healthy at home is sort of how I like think about it. And so a great use case that I'm excited about that our healthcare partners here in the U.S. are excited to work with us on is think of us as the, the physical side of telehealth, right? You're, you're on a, a video call with your doctor and there's some supply that they want you to have. Could be antibiotic. I always think about this experience I had with my son when he was little diagnosed with asthma when he was one years old. And they were like, oh yeah, you're going to get this inhaler contraption thing to put over his face. And I would have, you know, the magic there is, you know, instead of this being something you kind of get later and you have to then figure out yourself, it's like, no, we can deliver it while you're still in the call with your doctor and just shows up and you're on your back porch, you go get it and boom, you're off to the races. And and there's so many wins. That, That simple thing I described has so many layers to it, right? There's the convenience, the practicality, right? Of, you know, something that I certainly didn't appreciate before I had kids of just like, what does it take to schlep to the, you know, take a sick kid to the pharmacy, let alone the doctor? It's like, it's a whole thing, right? Not, and not to mention, you know, they're snotting up, you know, all the other kids in the pharmacy and in the doctor's office, which is not good for anybody. And, uh, and just making all of that just more seamless and more practical. And I also think about the examples with uh, another great use case that their health partners here have signed up to do with us is basically for us to support they're traveling practitioners, right? So a lot of healthcare systems around the U.S. are massively scaling up their home healthcare programs, right? And half the time, those practitioners go into a patient's home, they see a need for something that requires some medical supply they just didn't anticipate because they you know, hadn't been there yet. And we it will deliver to those practitioners while they're still there, right? So they can take care of it all in one visit. And it's just, again, just make it, you know, support those practitioners to just do their job efficiently. And, and again, in that, that home context, so powerful, right? You have to, when I first heard that, I was like, half the time that can't be real. But then of course, you know, like that's picturing my house and, you know, taking care of my grandfather when he was older. Yeah. You just, even when I would go visit him, like, you know, you just, 
my guess as to what he was dealing with versus what I saw when I walked into his house, just not the same thing, right? Right, right. And being able to just address those issues right there uh, efficiently. Anyway, that's another exciting use case I'm, I'm really excited about. That's fantastic. So in preparation for this interview, because we like to prepare, I called over to one of my buddies who's the chief pharmacy officer at um, a health system here in Detroit. And I said, hey, dude, I'm interviewing Zipline what would be some questions you'd have for them or risks or things to watch out for? And so one big question he had and I have for you now is, do you all do cold chain as well? So, you know, for example, for our listeners, you know, some drugs need to stay, stay um, cool. And so is that something as you all think about your drones flying around town, are they able to maintain that uh, that cold chain as they get to the patient's destination? We're very good at that. So we, we started in blood, which has very strict cold chain requirements in transport. Sure. And we've recently got certified for the ultra cold vaccines, right? The you know, minus 40 C and even, even lower temperatures certifications. And yeah, and so as your friend, like this is one of the things, again, I, I, as a technologist coming into the healthcare space, why not? I didn't know this thing called specialty pharma. It's like, Oh, there's this whole world of pharma that's like not available at your drugstore. What is that? And yeah, a lot of that stuff is the stuff you're talking about, cold chain. There's all these kind of sort of challenging sort of things. And this we're really well suited to help with those with those trickier deliveries that that are often the most health impactful if 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 you know delivered on time. And like you say, like, you know, with no temperature excursions. So that's actually, you know, functional medication that arrives. What's really interesting to me is um, you know, especially through COVID. So I was still working in health systems during COVID and we had all these logistical nightmare issues with ground-based transportation. Some of our couriers didn't show up, showed up too late, couldn't maintain cold storage. And so I remember saying to him at the time, I'm like, gosh, I wish we had like drones we could just send to our vaccine clinics and like they'll be there in like 20 minutes or less, right? Yeah. Like basically fly. I think you all put in your report, we can get items to people as fast as a sparrow can fly, which I think is a a really interesting way to put it. We've delivered now millions of cold chain products in our over the years. And there's a great story that really contrasts, you know, you mentioned COVID that really um, look brings this to life for me personally when you know my grandmother who's here and trying to get her, you know, vaccine appointment and dealing with the for what they call them now, the super center, <laughs> these giant vaccine operations and things like that. I want to contrast that with how we enabled Ghana to do this, right? So in Ghana, we we our distribution centers were, you know, we got those same deliveries of, of like, hey, we got our first set of COVID vaccines, right? And when the first things came in, right, it was a very particular, you know, we, we were going for pe- for patients and certain, you know, elderly patients and at risk patients, right? And so all of the health clinics, of course, right, that have the relationships with those patients, they put in their orders for us on, you know, basically on that Friday. By Saturday, we had delivered all the vaccines directly to the, these local neighborhood clinics. And by the end of the weekend, they had all gotten their doses, right, from the doctor that they trust in their local clinic. And I contrast that with my grandma's experience of like, I'm making all these phone calls and I drive her to this mass vaccination site. And she's like, wait, where did you bring me? <laughs> like, this is, this is not comfortable. This is not how healthcare should be. <laughs> It was really a good contrast between the magic of this kind of very responsive on-demand delivery, enabling the healthcare we want versus not having that and having this, well, this healthcare experience that was that was pretty clunky, to say the least. What I love, you know, what you're bringing to our audience today is so many of the guests we interview on the healthcare wrap are more focused in like, not that this isn't digital health, it is, but like, like software, like telehealth tools, you know, remote patient monitoring. But what I love about this is you're helping us explore the full breadth and depth of what it means to be consumer centric, including getting your physical things immediately, right? Which, you know, but I'm working with some disruptors to, you know, mail drugs, you know, within a couple hours. But hey, imagine getting it in 20 minutes, right? And so I think, um, I think this is a, a lovely discussion. I'm curious, Keenan, like, and it's still not clear in my mind, and I'm sure to some of our listeners, like, what does this really look like for health systems? Do they have to, like, build a new facility that's like this drone port that then has these robots flying people around? Like, what does that look like? How does how do health systems work with you all to actually start to think about operationalizing non-ground-based delivery into their logistics and supply chain? Think of it like a bolt-on, right? So if, basically, if they have a, a pharmacy, all these health systems have their pharmacy locations, the whole idea is that we can bolt this operation onto the side of that existing facility and enable them to basically have this 
thing that actually, you know, we call it a magic portal, but it's literally like a portal in the wall. If you, if you check out the videos on our website, like picture this like little window, <laughs> kind of like, a, I don't know, maybe like a drive through window. You open this drive through window and this little thing we call a droid comes out and you just load, the, the, the pharmacist can just load up what they need to send to a patient, close the lid, it retracts out, and the, the drone system takes care of the rest. It flies out to the patient's home, makes that delivery. And this is really important that this bolt on is that mindset matters, right? Because building new construction, stuff like that, you know, that's very hard to do. It takes a lot of time. And our customers want to solve these problems right away. Now that you mentioned that, I did take a look on your website. So I think I saw the, the, the drawings. And it reminded me instantly of sort of those vacuum tube systems that a lot of health systems have to move drugs, paperwork, you name it, up and down the tower. And so it seems no more invasive than that, which frankly is a great design insight, so to speak. Exactly. I love that metaphor. Yeah. Well, curious then, what does it look like on the patient side? And so particularly patients who might have, you know, or polychronic, chronic disease, you know, I'm sure they all don't live in a you know, beautiful home with a massive yard to land a drone. And so what does that look? How do patients typically receive from the health system when, they, when they're using ZipLine? This is exciting. Our first metro for this very new platform we are in, de- in development, which basically solves the problem you're getting at, which is like patients who just don't have a lot of space. They might have a, a small you know, front porch or back porch, and, and that's all we have to deliver into. I th- we think of this as like kind of urban sprawl, right? So this isn't the sky rises, but this is like all the three-story sprawl that the, the most people in the world live in. So what does that look like? So the, the drone flies out to the patient's home. It hovers way up high, about as high up as a football field is long. And this little droid on the string gets lowered down. And the droid itself has its own little fan. So it can, if there's a big gust of wind, it'll still come down nice and smooth and precisely. It comes down, touches down, you know, run that table on your back porch. The, the doors on the bottom of the droid open up, leave the package behind, the droid just zips out of there. And that all takes like 30 seconds or so. And then you'll have the, your, your prescription in a little bag you know, right where it's convenient for you. It's incredible. We're always dealing with, you know, what's the expectation? So yeah, we're setting that expectation for them now. I love the growth too. Like I love where it can still go. Like for how many years it's been around, for how long of a runway that it has come across already for all the use cases that are there, there's like the sky's the limit, it feels like. I mean, there, there's still so many more things they could do. I'm so excited about that too. There's, you know, we've hit enough big enough scale that like we have so many people who count on this every day, you know, many cases with, and with life critical deliveries that like we know this is an absolute future of the world's healthcare systems. But still that scale that we're doing, while it's huge by metrics, by many metrics, it's still tiny compared to the impact we want to have for everybody. And so, yeah, really excited about what it's going to take to make that happen. You know, it's uh, you know, Jared and I, like I said, we chat with a lot of folks. And when some of the news started to hit around you all and others that are getting into the drone space, a lot of the chatter from, call it more like legacy types of people are saying, well, why would we do that? Like, it's just extra cost. Is delivery, like, is mail delivery really not enough? Who really benefits? You know, is there really an ROI? In my perspective, and I think Jared would share it too, is that as other industries start to use drone delivery for that last my logistics, just like having e-commerce, this will become just a competitive necessity for all health systems to compete in the market, particularly as healthcare becomes more commoditized. And so, you know, my answer to them is whether whether there is, there actually is a a clinical improvement or not, it does not matter. This is the way. This is the way products and services, be it healthcare or not, I think will be delivered in the future. No question. Yeah, I agree with you there, but at the same time, what I, you know. What's exciting to me is that like it is lower cost and it's better healthcare. And to me, that's where I think it's part of the reason we have so many of these partners in the U.S. lined up to, to scale with over these coming years is just how trans, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities that do that in healthcare. And a good example is like, and, and don't get me wrong, right? Like, will some patients still get medications through the mail? Sure. But there's so many situations in patient care where time is of the essence, right? Right. You might, you might, you know, a hypertension patient, right? They might get, they, they can get their meds in the mail most of the time, but like it, it's going to, it happens where they misplace it. They lose it. They, you know, whatever happens to it, they, for, they, they go, they, they travel and they forget to, to bring it. Right. And like, you know, people are like, well, it's, you know, that's just not a big deal. It's a big deal, right? You go off your meds, you can end up in the hospital in a week or two, right? It's a big deal. And there's so many conditions like this where just being able to get them that delivery right when they need it, it just 
it's better for everybody. And that's, that's where that magic is. And there's so many examples like that that are just so compelling. And uh, anyway, yeah. what I'm also hearing in everything you shared is, and particularly putting my former health system hat on living through COVID under logistics nightmare is control. Presumably, you know, health systems will be in a lot more control of that last mile delivery by working with Zipline instead of working with some intermediary delivery service, right? Where you can't necessarily count on them all the time. And so I think that alone can help. The control, the responsiveness, the very first deliveries we ever did here in the United States in healthcare, well, actually at all, which was for healthcare, was delivering masks in COVID. And it was one of those things where Right. Very similar to like the COVID vaccine thing when they first came out. Right? There were lots of times during the, the COVID challenge where we just didn't have enough masks and be able to be like, hey, here's the mask we have. And I'd like five to this hospital and 10 at this hospital. And like and that and not only can they be that granular about it, but it's it happens in like an hour. Right. All the hospitals get exactly what they need as opposed to the status quo. It's like, OK, well, I have two trucks and like they could make it to like five hospitals today. And so you ended up with like, OK, but how many should they deliver? Or well, we can only go there once a week. So let's give them more than they need. And so they have a little more than they need. And these other hospitals have, don't have anything that day. And it's just not it's not flexible. Right. It's not responsive. You know, I, there's a stat that really hit me. When I, when we were looking at this space and people were asking questions about like why we do this, that like reminded me of how, I don't know, how, how variable the demand and challenges in the healthcare space. That's like a typical suburban pharmacy, right? So not even an urban pharmacy, typical suburban pharmacy is getting deliveries on average five times a week, right? And like, it's, this isn't like they get a, or, you know, they get a shipment once a week or even once a month. Right? This is five times a week. And that's just, it's, it's a reminder of just like, you, you know, how difficult it is to predict the demand of various things and how much it fluctuates. And that's where that, that responsiveness, that flexibility is just so powerful. Well, I think a huge opportunity for you all is you're probably aware that a lot of health systems, a lot of large health systems are building their own. They call them like pharmacy share services centers where they're essentially like doing their own packing for the entire system and then shipping it out to their hospital. So it's all done under one roof. They can drastically drop the cost. But then the the issue then becomes like the logistics of, okay, how many trucks go where and when? And the opportunity then is, well, why don't we just do it in more or less real time? Exactly. Tools like Zipline, so to speak. I wanted to ask, I know we're getting to the top of the hour here, but a lot of folks that listen to our podcast are from health systems. Can any health system just call you all and start to think about doing this? Or are there only certain states and regulation and cities that approve this? Is I guess that's my question. Is is We've had, yeah, multiple CEOs of U.S. health systems have reached out to us through their contact form on our website. It's one of those surreal moments in, in, in a startup journey when those things happen. But uh, but no, absolutely. And, and we, we're very excited about this impact and we had this experience we have of like, you know, we, we already deliver, you know, prescriptions by drone. A lot of people, you know, overcoming, as you can imagine, that there's technical stuff there to get those approvals uh, to make that OK. And we've just we've put a lot of these things behind us now. And so it's becoming faster and faster and faster to launch and scale in these different use cases. OK, so what I'm hearing then is like like regulatory issues, things have been solved. It's good to go in the United States. Yeah. For the most part. Okay. Oh, totally. And we just hit our millionth delivery, which is really, really exciting. And uh, we're launching with the National Health Service in the UK later this year. And yeah, there's, there's basically we are working with everybody who really is excited about the impact that they can have improving their health system with us. And we'd love to talk with them. That's so cool. I'm so glad this is happening. I just can't wait to see a drone flying around in Detroit. I looked at your website. It looks like you're working with some folks in Michigan. So if you ever up this way, we'll have to... I'll have to find you all and, and come see what you're doing. Looking forward to it. That'd be fantastic. Well, we've covered so much, and I love the, the fact they mentioned that of what's coming in the short-term horizon of working with uh, working in the UK and expanding and and growing from here. It's a fun part in the journey to be right now, and uh, that's a perfect place really for us to wrap up for this episode. There's so much more we could talk about, but you know, I think we, we've been able to cover the the exact impact this has on the consumer experience, and we all know what that means when healthcare is easier in any way when you are getting physical things faster you engage with your health more so we just love making that connection yes. at, at all times because that's it's what everyone is working towards but uh, we love to be able to shine a spotlight on uh, this amazing work that the team's doing here at Zipline so we wanted to just thank you for, for giving us so much to think about and as usual we appreciate you coming on the show we've had the absolute pleasure of speaking with Keenan Weirbeck from Zipline thanks so much for joining us thank you Zane thank you Jared 